Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Welcome to another edition of the All Out Leadership Podcast. We're taking the month of January and we are sharpening our axe. Ecclesiastes 1010 says, if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength will be needed, but skill will bring success. So we're not learning new things, but we're brushing up on things that we know and just sharpening our axe. We've talked about why many goals fail. It's not that the goal's wrong, but it's established for the wrong reason. Reason. The motive and the motivation behind the goal is often wrong. So you may have a right goal, but the wrong motivation, and you're rarely going to achieve it. Last week, we looked at what we called guilt goals, and we would often set goals out of just feeling guilty. And we saw that we don't need to set guilt goals, but we could set gratitude goals, just goals from who we are in Christ Jesus. And it's a game changer. And so I'm going to talk about this next one. This one has sabotaged many goals in my life, and it's this somebody goals, meaning I'm setting a goal that I'm going to be somebody. I was in junior high and it was horrible. I, I just think they should outlaw junior high personally. And somehow you should get a pass and skip it and just move right on. Cause it's, if you're a nerd, if you aren't the cool kid, man, it is so rough. Well, that was me. I wasn't the cool kid and I wasn't dressing cool. My hair wasn't cool. Nothing about me was cool. And I, I remember like in this one girl, she was a cheerleader and I actually went to her house and I had a box of chocolates and flowers and I knocked on her door and a friend, my friends go, Eric, we're going to, we're going to back you up, man. So I knock on the door and then my friends run and leave me standing there and she answers the door and oh my gosh, I felt like a moron. You know why? Cause I was a moron. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't get a word out of my mouth, and I pretty much cried and walked away. Well, the next day at school, she told all her cheerleader friends, who told all the jocks, they were laughing at me, making fun of me, and they were like, who do you think you are? You'll never have a chance. And they took me and threw me in the trash can in front of all the cheerleaders and this one girl. So in the trash can upside down, reflecting upon my life, I thought, I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm, I'm going to achieve something with my life. And do you know what? I actually began to see some certain life change. And then I get saved, and that was a game changer. But what I found is, even as a new Christian, as I started setting goals for my life, they were still, without even me realizing it, they were still goals motivated in, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to be somebody. You're going to regret that you said no to me, girl. You're going to look at me someday and go, ah, oh, I should have said yes to him because I'm somebody. Look, that is the worst motivation I think you can have uh, for goals. You're just going to be dangerous. You're going to hurt yourself and you're going to hurt a whole lot of people trying to prove that you're somebody. Look, the sooner we get a hold of this fact, you are a nobody and learn to celebrate that and embrace it. Uh, it's liberating because there is only one somebody in this universe and it's God. Exodus 3 verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. Look, there's only one I am. It's God. There's one somebody in the universe. It's God. And the sooner we give up the motivation to try to prove that we are somebody, look at me, uh, man, it just sets you free because now I don't have to walk around uh, keeping stats on us. See, because if you want to be somebody, then you have to watch everybody else because you have to see where everybody else is. is. What car are they driving? How many likes did they get on their Facebook post, mom? And so, you know, it's first day of school and you sent little Timmy to school and so-and-so sent little so and -so, you know, Susie Sarah to school and they got more likes on their Facebook. And so, oh man, you're not a no. It's a roller coaster because you're up and down. You're looking at everybody else. Stats, status is keeping stats on us. It's an exhausting lifestyle when you feel you have to to look at everybody else to evaluate whether or not you're a somebody. Because to be a somebody, that means somebody had to be a nobody for you to be a somebody. That's not how the kingdom of God operates. In fact, when you look at Satan and how he tried to tempt Jesus while Jesus was in the wilderness fasting 40 days, remember he said this, if you're the son of God, turn these stones to bread. If you're the son of God, throw yourself off the top of this temple, jump down. The whole point there was, hey, if you're somebody, if you're the somebody who you think you are, declare you are, that God the Father said you are, prove it. 
when you are striving to become a somebody, you're spending an entire lifetime trying to prove it. Think about what gets you mad when somebody cuts you off in traffic. You're somebody. Who is this nobody think they are to cut me off in traffic? When you look at most of the things that actually get you mad and upset in life, it's because somebody crossed your lane and bumped into the somebody. And so, look, when you just learn that who you really are is you're a nobody saved by grace, uh, that you're a wisp, you're just a vapor, you're just a grain of sand and the multitude of the sands upon the seashore, yet God knows you, he knows you by name, he knows the numbers of the hairs upon your head. Wow, my somebody is never going to be found in what somebody else says of me other than what the somebody God says about me. For he loved me and he gave himself for me. That is the only thing I need to validate that I am somebody because I'm somebody to God. Because in the kingdom of God, there are nobodies. Everybody's a somebody to him. And that's all that matters. The first sermon Jesus preached, he, he really helped us with this. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It, it all begins with acknowledging you're, you're, you're bankrupt. Salvation begins with an acknowledgement of I'm spiritually bankrupt. I'm poor. I can't get there myself. Then the next thing he goes, blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comfort, comforted. The moment you realize you are nobody with nothing <laughs> to bring to God, then you could just begin to go, okay, God, I don't have to try to prove anything to anybody else. Blessed are the meek. They will inherit the earth. Meek is strength that's bridled, that's controlled. And blessed are they who hunger and thirst, not for success, not for fame, not to be somebody, but for what's just right. They shall be filled. As you just study the whole teachings of Christ, uh, it's this, the least in the kingdom of heaven will be great. But those that are great, will be least. The first will be last. The last will be first. So look, don't spend your life wasting your time trying to be somebody. Just accept the fact that you're a nobody that is loved by the somebody. And when you get to heaven, here's what you're going to find. When you live your life content to be nobody, so to speak, you don't have to be famous. You don't have to make an impression upon somebody else. When you realize that and you're content that it's not about me anyway, it's like John the Baptist. I must decrease that he might increase. What you will find is the people who are the greatest nobodies in the kingdom of God that were content to be the nobodies in the kingdom of God that simply live to let Jesus name be famous. You'll find out that they'll truly be the greater somebodies inside of eternity. All right, next week, we're going to pick up with a few more wrong motivations uh, as to why many of our goals fail. See you next week. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gained new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all out leader.